I'm sick of it. I'm fed up. I can't take it anymore. I can't take it anymore. I just can't do it anymore. I'm sick of fighting. I've given up. Be very easy to do that this week. Yet another tragedy, yet another thing in this world that makes you want to give up. Where is the hope, Father? What does it even matter? Why should I even care? Because our Lord says, we're not made for this world. Today, we are made for Christ. We are made for eternal life. Our hope is not in this world. It is not in concerts or in presidents or even in popes. Our confidence is in Christ. And so it's good that you're fed up. It's good that you can't take it anymore because that's what we are supposed to be feeling. But yet the devil is so deceptive, right? So deceptive. He wants to convince you that lawmakers and legislators are going to save us. If they enact laws and policies, they will make this world a better place. If only we could control the guns. If only we could control this, control that. If only this person could get elected. Only if I had this job. Only, only, only. Why do we allow this world to control our peace? We are out of control. I don't have to tell you that. We are out of control. That's why we need somebody who is in control. The beautiful gospel of today shows us that there is a person directing all these things, no matter how heinous it looks, no matter how out of control it looks, no matter how out of control your life is, you have a rock to stand on. You have a vine dresser who prunes off the bad branches so that life could come to that vine. You have someone who has made you in his image and likeness. This transforms our life. But our God is long suffering. Long suffering. He is patient. He is kind. He is merciful, full of mercy. And he will wait on you wait on you to wake up, to not take it anymore, to say, I have nothing left. But the scribes and Pharisees in our holy gospel thought they were in control. And they ultimately stoned one servant, right? Killed another, cast another one out. And then when the son came, they killed him, tried to take his inheritance, but it's not to be possessed. Just like this world is not to be possessed, but yet we wait, we wait. We wait and we wait and we wait and we wait and we wait saying, I'm sick of this. I wish somebody would do something about this. When is that somebody going to come? What if he's already there? He's already done it. He's just waiting on you to turn to him. 
but he's so familiar, you take him for granted. Ah, but guess what? I don't think those 59 people are taking them for granted. I don't think those 500 people who saw their life flash before their eyes are taking him for granted or taking life for granted. I hate to do this and I don't want to use that example Every time we go to Walmart, we go out, we speak over coffee and donuts. I'm sick of this. I'm so sick of this. I'm so fed up with this world. Why are we continuing to put our hope in this world? Why? Because we're numb. There's a celebrity, and I use that word pretty loosely, called Russell Brand. He was in some movies in the early, uh, late 2010, around there, went through drug addiction, alcohol addiction. He just came out with a new book. It's his fourth book. It's called Recovery. How to free ourselves from addiction. My friend sent me an interview by him because he thought, you know, I might get something out of it. My buddy's in the world. He's possessed by the world. He thought, look at how funny it is Russell Brand telling these people, you people, how to get free from recovery. And I looked at the interview and I was astounded. Why? Because he hit rock bottom and he's starting to see the world in a different way. He's seeing the world and promoting, you ready for it? Oneness and love. This guy is promoting that? When Russell Brand is a prophet? I'm surprised. Because we're a church of love. We are a church of oneness. We have Jesus Christ and we're not speaking out. This morning, just this morning, just not even three hours ago, one of my friends sent me a text message and he said, you got to check out what happened on Saturday Night Live last night. During the weekend update, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but there's a kind of a news, they make jokes about the news and things. But one of the anchors, he was making fun of the fact that the Trump administration has taken away contraception from this legislature. They're trying to take away the employer's right to provide contraception. And you know what this anchor said? He said, this is so ridiculous. He said, anybody, any employer should be able to spend $10 on contraception. And this is the biggest racketeering scandal of all. He said, and women allow it. And he joked, they're going through a global warming of their bodies. Global warming just so I can be promiscuous. And everyone laughed. Ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. The devil is mocking us because we're not speaking out. Now, what does that look like? What does you speaking out look like? I can't answer that because I don't have all the answers. I don't have any of the answers. But I know one thing. I know one thing, the promise that Jesus says in our Holy Gospel today is pretty fierce. It's pretty lit. It's serious. Therefore I say to you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people that will produce its fruit. 
that scares me. Because that's a promise that affects me. If I do not preach it, I am like St. Paul. Woe to me. I've been entrusted with the gospel. If I'm not doing my job, if I just tickle your ears and tell you everything that you want to hear and make you feel all warm and fuzzy, I'm not doing my job. Why? Because the servants of the king got kicked out, stoned, put to death. If I'm going to follow in the footsteps of Jesus Christ and call myself a Christian, I need to die but we've become so numb. We can't wait for Thor Ragnarok to come out. I can't wait for the next season of Stranger Things. I can't wait to see what Doc McStuffins is doing today. I can't wait to see what's going on on the TV, on the internet, the news, Fox News, CNN, MSNBC. I can't wait to just fill my life with noise. I can't wait to get home and get down to business. St. Paul reminds us today, have no anxiety at all in everything. By prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, make your requests known to God. You're fed up. You can't take it anymore. Make your requests known to God. Because the peace of God surpasses all understanding. And here's the best part will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. But we're not turning to him. St. Paul says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and whatever is gracious, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, Think of these things. Therefore, what's a principle you can put together in your life? Whatever you're doing, if it doesn't lead you to prayer, why are you doing it? Whether it's mowing your lawn to watching TV, if it's not leading you to prayer, leading you to commune with God, why are we doing it? Because we're only feeding the numbness. We're only escaping the reality that I do need to pray. I need to take time out of my day and commune with you, God. I can be cooking and I can be praying. I can be watching my kids and be praying. Our holy founder, Father Jean-Baptiste Rosan, said, you can be walking, you can be standing, you can be sitting, and you can pray. You can be walking to class on a college campus. You could be flying a plane. You could be laying in your bed. And rather than turn on the TV, pray. What a shock. You might actually get a good night's sleep instead of this light blasting in your eyes or this noise putting you to bed at night. I know Shepard Smith's voice is very nice to listen to as you go to bed but it's not worth it. It's nice to hear Jimmy Kimmel and Jimmy Fallon in your ears. Stop. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. And you know what? You could call me a hypocrite. It's easy for you to say, Father Andy, you're easy, you, you got the monastery. You're in with all these priests. Your life is surrounded by God, but yet I can be distracted too. In my life, the shows that I binged watched before Netflix, the things that I did in my life still haunt me. They play in my head. They play in all of our heads. And so what do we turn to? More noise to drown that noise out and more noise and more noise. Or I don't want to go to confession because I know I'm going to do it again. The line's too long. The fathers of mercy, they never have enough priests around. I'm around. I'm around. Come not on Sunday morning. Come on Thursday afternoon. We'll hear confessions whenever you want. What about that year of mercy? What fruits came from that? We had a lot of people here for adoration on Fridays during the year of mercy. Got only a few now. 
I know we're busy, my brothers and sisters, and I don't want, I don't want to come down hard, but we don't need more control. We need to get sin out of our life. And if you want to use the word control, then use sin control. Get sin out of our life, whatever it is, if it's gossip, if it's lying, if it's pornography, if it's promiscuity, if it's just being overwhelmed by this world. I'm fed up and I can't take it anymore. And that's why I'm a Catholic. That's why I became a priest, because God had mercy on me. I experienced God in the confessional, at Holy Mass, even though there were bad priests in my life, even though there were wicked people in my life, even though my family and friends strayed from the church, I knew I can't stray because I don't trust myself enough. God had mercy on me. God has mercy on you. He is rich and full of mercy. His heart is humble, contrite, beautiful. He is true. He is beautiful. He is honorable. He is just. He is lovely. He is gracious. How many times do we have to say it before our hearts will be lifted up, no longer weighted down by this world? It is only then that we will have no anxiety at all. But in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, we make our request to God. We come to Him when we are overburdened, when we've been laboring in this world, when we are sick and tired and fed up. Go to Him. Come to Him. You will receive Him in just a few moments. No more excuses. We're sick of it. So come to him.